The Virtual Console Collection from Slate Digital is an emulation plugin based on six analog consoles. Now that probably sounds like a mouthful. So, what does it do? Who would use it? And is it worth getting? So let's hop into the box and find out. All right, so let's start by talking about what this plugin actually does, because this might all look a little daunting. And you'll see that it actually comes with two plugins built in. You've got the virtual channel and the virtual mix bus. And at a glance, you might think these do the same thing. And you'd be right, kind of. Basically, what's different about these is your virtual channel is made for individual tracks, just the one stereo sound. Your virtual mix bus is meant to be more of a summing emulator. Um, so the way that works is it'll allow for more imperfections, like crosstalk and stuff like that, and different types of saturations. So it'll behave more like the console's summing bus. I'll use this on my mastering channel, and sometimes, depending on the track itself, even on my drums and my sidechain. Whereas with your virtual channel, you want to use that just on individual sounds. So you've also got your input and your output. So this is pretty straightforward. Your input is the sound going in to the virtual channel plugin, and your output is the sound coming out. And you'll notice that they're automatically linked, which you can unlink just by hitting that. And basically what that'll do is just gain match. That's for if you want to push the console and get kind of that characteristic sound without actually making your audio louder. From here, you've got your six options to choose from. So each of these are modeled after real outboard gear, real consoles, and they're all classics. You've got the Brit 4KE, which is modeled after the SSL 4000 E series console. This one's pretty warm, but it's also got some punchiness to it. You've got the Brit 4KG, which is modeled after the SSL 4000 G series console. This one's also pretty warm, but it's a little more aggressive sounding and a little punchier. Then you've got the USA. This one's modeled after the API 1604 console. It's pretty fat sounding, um, and it's got a pretty good mid-range punch to it. You've got your Brit N. This one's modeled after the Neve 8048 console. This one kind of has a fat, warm sound to it. It's not unsimilar to the SSL emulations, but it's a little less punchy. So this next one you might be a little confused by, since it doesn't have a name, it looks like it's just a symbol. So that's actually a Trident symbol. Um, it's modeled after the Trident ADB console. This one's got some really nice smoothness to the high end. And last but not least, we've got the RC Tube. So this one's modeled after a vintage RCA broadcast all tube console. Um, it's real old, it's older than any of the others, it's from the 1950s, and it is an all-tube console, so it's got that kind of characteristic tube sound to it. It's got a nice high end to it, it's kind of smooth sounding, and it's pretty warm. It's also got a pretty fat low end to it, which can be really nice. Moving down here, we've also got Drive. So basically, without actually adding, let's say, 13.4 decibels to the sound, it pushes it that much harder into the console without making it louder. You've got your noise reduction, which I usually just keep pushed in. Basically, any analog gear is going to have a noise threshold to it. Um, these are made to emulate that noise threshold. So when you hit the noise reduction button, you kind of knock out that noise, and you keep it somewhat digital sounding. This can be nice because it can add a lot of cleanliness to your sound while maintaining that analog character. Last but not least, we've got this group knob. So I don't really use this one too much personally, but I can see where it'd be really useful. Let's say you've got a whole bunch of instruments and you want them all to be on the same console. You would set all those instruments to group A, and you saw just like that, this one adjusted so they would both be using the same console, in that circumstance, the RC tube. But it'll also affect your input output and your drive. Basically anything that gets altered on one console gets altered on all of them, so it keeps that consistency. 
So who would buy something like this? I would say basically any intermediate to advanced level engineer. These plugins are really cool. They model actual analog, very expensive outboard gear. But with that said, they don't really make your mix any better, if that makes sense. They obviously sound very good, and that's why people want these kind of plugins, but unless you know what to do with them, they won't help you a whole lot. They'll add the character of the console you've selected, but that's about it. It's not going to make your mix sound significantly better. It will make it sound significantly more analog, but if you're not used to mixing like that, or you're at a point where you're not used to even having especially great mixes, let's say you're a beginner, then these might kind of fall flat for you. With that said, I think they're amazing plugins and they have a very useful application. So let's get to the big question. What do these sound like? So I'm gonna solo my keys and you'll see I've got keys one and keys two. Basically, this is just for panning. These are the same instrument, so I used the virtual console as the virtual channel all on the same bus. And to start you off, I'll disable that. And then with it on, So you'll hear it's not a massive difference, but it does add some character to it. So let's say we just want to blow it through this console and turn the input all the way up and the drive all the way up. Let's hear what that sounds like. And then bypass. enabled. So you're noticing some pretty big differences there. All of these differences add up between instruments and your buses. Matter of fact, let's go over to the bus and see what kind of difference that makes. So I've got this set up alone on my mix bus, and I'll play everything in context with this disabled. And then enabled. So just like that, you add a little more color, a little more character, and a little more air to your whole mix. Again, it's nothing absolutely massive, but it is a nice subtlety that just adds something nice to a mix. So with all this considered, is the Virtual Console Collection worth getting? Well, you can buy it on its own for $149, or you can pay a monthly fee and get it as part of the All Access Bundle. So considering the cost and the application, I would say yes, but keeping in mind that this is a plugin that's really meant for intermediate to advanced producers. This isn't something that you're going to use to get a better mix. This is something that's going to enhance an already good mix. Now it's a really cool plugin and I currently use it on just about every project, but keep in mind your current needs, where you're at as a producer, and what type of music you make. Is this something that would actually make your mixes better? Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And if there's other plugins you'd like to see reviewed, please let us know in the comments. Thanks again.